If we would turn in our Bibles to Luke, Luke chapter 12. We shall be reading verse 32 as one of a few scriptures we'll read that will set the tone to this short exhortation. Luke 12, 32. It reads, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you what? The kingdom. Let's go again to Revelation chapter 3 for yet another reading. In Revelation chapter 3, we will read to verse 11, but take note. On the seventh and eight verses. Verse seven. Unto the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, This thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David. He that opened and no man shut it and shut it and no man opened it. I would like to remind you that what seemed to be a shut door as you knew it as we knew it in our various circumstances, the law that the children of Israel threw the Red Sea and opened that way up has opened seemingly shut doors. And you've been told you will come and testify in this place. Praise the name of the Lord. That was a sure word. I bear witness to it in my spirit. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have said before thee an open door. And no man can what? Shut it. Then he adds, For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Take good notice of the fact that at the time of the end, the time of the closing days, of the church age God has a great possession but that possession is a little flock and the work before them may seem undaunting may seem daunting right but it tells us here fear not little flock it is the Father's good pleasure to do what? Give you the kingdom. 
So we are living the time when the kingdom is being offered stepwisely and being expressed. The kingdom is not a geographical or, or spiritual location that is invisible. The kingdom is a reality fully grown and before the Lord into which he is giving us access. Brethren, the days ahead are not common days. And a lot of encouragement is needed. First, to know what God intends and to know the walk before us. And for us to know that what God intends will be realized by giving us the kingdom as a possession to make manifest his will upon the earth. The kingdom is a treasure. And Second Corinthians says we have this treasure where? In 18 verses. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. But it says, fear not, little flock. Whenever the Lord says not to fear, it really means the tendency to fear is there and there is fear. Fear comes and may be manifested in several ways. One of which is apprehension. This thing that the Lord says he will do. And this perception he has given to us that he will do it in our time. Will he do it? Do we find ourselves competent? To be instrument in his hands to do these things. That kind of apprehension is a fear. But what does it say? Is, fear not, I have made a choice of you. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, to supply you all you need to accomplish my thought. I, the all wise God, have made a choice of you. And by you, I will accomplish my purpose. There may be things that may seem very troubling and vexing. But at the same time, in the spirit, God is saying, my kingdom shall be given to you and you will turn the kingdoms of this world to become my kingdom. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Fear not. And of course, we've looked at it in just the one main trajectory. The summing up of all of the plans and purposes of God and the realization of that which he has before time set out. When he said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. That, 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 that is God's statement of purpose that all scriptures are tied to. And God created man in his image. Male and female created he them. And blessed them and said what? Be fruitful and multiply. So that the fullness of his likeness may appear. That original purpose is referred to when we say, quoting the scriptures, known to God from the foundation of the world are what? All his works. 
His works are not things that he does, of things that are physical or spiritual mainly. God's works are his people. When he says great and marvelous are his works, it's pointing to what he has done. The realization of that which he has spoken at the beginning. And putting it in the first person singular, I will make man in my own image. I will make man to be in my likeness. So the likeness and the image of God in a full blown proportion is what we see in Revelation 15.1. So when the works themselves are be- begin to say, great and marvelous are thy works. It shows to us that God takes a rest because his works have appeared. You remember in the, in the time the Lord created man and the world is to live in in six days and on the seventh day he rested. And when you get to Revelation 15 he takes his rest because the fullness of what he began to walk to bring about is seen in that great utterance. Great and marvelous. And I saw a sign in heaven. Great and marvelous. And a sign that was seen. And with the, the description of the seven angels which are human angels, and it should not really, really, really uh, bother you in the spirit. Angels of the spirit nature who we are created before Jesus Christ came into the world are of a lesser glory than the angels that we find in most parts of the book of Revelation. There are some parts where those spirit angels are referred to. But the angels refer to really in most of the book of Revelation there speak of divine beings that has come forth in, to, to a level that is far above angels. Amen? Alright, alright. So let's make it uh, simpler. The new creation of course, we know this, we are just being reminded. The new creation had never existed until Christ came. True, he got the starting material from human persons, like Adam's body was taken from the dust of the earth. Is that not so? But it is a new creation, a new species of beings that has never existed. They are not human, they are not angels, they are not animal, they are divine beings. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? All right. So that was a let's let's create man in our own image and after our likeness. What would they do? And let them have what? Dominion. Glory. It's a little flock now, but it's shaping it to become great and marvelous. And when God comes to that, he takes his rest. When you come to Revelation 16, the highest thing that can be said about God is said there, God comes to rest. Then his words continue through his people. He takes a rest. It's like saying, these men and women that are brought to this estate will be able to move this work to completion. Amen? Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. I, I hope I've not left anybody. The eternal spirit comes to rest when a batch of people come up to the sphere where it can be said these are great and marvelous. Because it is the word of encouragement that is coming to us. 
And because we cannot afford to spend time on what is not the main part of the body, I will do a little reading from the reference passage, make some comment, and that will be sufficient uh, to help us to see the connection this scripture bear with how things are now and what God expects. And it will bring about amongst us. Fear not! Little flock. He has a message for us. But when you come to Revelation 15, I'm going to do this very fast. Look at verse 1. He says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying, Sorry, that's 16. 15, 1. And I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous. Seven what? Angels having what? The seven last plague. This seven angel is symbolic. These angels are human persons. I thought you would say amen. Mm, understand first. Later, accept if you when you examine. But first of all, accept what is, understand what is spoken here. Why are they said to be great and marvelous? Because the sign that precedes this is in Revelation 12. In verse 1 say, and I saw a sign in heaven, a wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, standing on the moon, with a crown of what? How many stars? Hello? Have, have you left me? Okay, Revelation 12 verse 1. Let's go there. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head, a crown of twelve stars. This is a middle of the road position, as it were. We may not be able to go into all of it, but this is that estate of life that you and I are come to, have come to, or we come to. In our walk with God. When in chapter 4 it says, Come up hither, it was addressed to persons who we are in the having the experiences you see addressed in the seven church, seven typical churches, rising and falling, rising and falling, because they had a perspective. That was less than what God was showing them. And by the voice of the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ spoke to the seven churches, called them to repentance, address of situation, and at the end of that, it would not just have a body of people on earth rising and falling, it would have a, a band of people, heavenly, spirit minded people. From start to finish, living and walking by the Spirit. Say, come up here. Come up here. And I will open up to you the fullness of my purpose. I will show you yesterday in the light of today. I will show you today in the light of what I want to do tomorrow. And I will show you tomorrow to bring strong influences of Upon you on how you conduct yourself today. Amen. All right. So, arising from this little bands of people coming in twos, in threes, in small numbers, coming up, what you see in Revelation 12 is a reality in the heavens. Of course, you are not supposing that when uh, the literal skies are removed, that one day you will see. This so is speaking of the church, the church that has come to accept the call 
to be spirit minded, to be heavenly minded. Amen? Alright. From this church that has grown, you see verse 2, verse 5, a man child is born. That represents another position. The man child is not the fullness realm, but it is a realm when a man gets to will always make it to the throne. Amen? Alright, this is just a little bit of um, additions for the purpose of making the survey in Revelation 15, 16 very brief. Now, it is the man-child coming to full age that is the great and marvelous sign in the heavens. Alright, so quickly come back to Revelation chapter 15. We take a leap a jump and come to verse 6 a description of the, of, of these seven angels of course the seven is symbolic of these seven angels and shown a reflection that reminds us of what is said of Jesus in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 and the seven angels came out of the temple having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen you may want to complete it with me and having the breast guided with what Golden gathering. Amen. These are no longer struggling persons that have the belt of service on their waist. They have been grown. They have come to full grace. And the belt of service is now upon their breast. They are able to milk out things easily like the fully breasted one does. Jesus Christ's belt is not on his waist, it's on his breast. In Revelation 1, it says, Pap, for Pap, they have his breast. But these ones have come to full age in the Lord, and the Lord will now rest from all his works. Why? Because one that will be able to handle the situation around the world is come. Who will be able to subdue the nations. Glory. And of them and by them and through them it shall be said. The kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Amen. And God takes rest. If you read on and I just want to jump. I give that to us as a little bit of exercise. If you read on in Revelation chapter 16. And you come to where the Lord is named. You find that the subtotal of, his, of all that he is, is given. And then it is said, the one that shall be. Not Okay, let's just take, I'm rushing, but let's just take the little description we know. The Lord who was, who is, and who is to come. The one who was, who is, who is to come, the Lord God Almighty. That is the description we see in chapter 1. We see it again in chapter 4. We see it again in chapter 5. But when these great and marvelous ones have come forth, glory is no longer said to be the Lord who was, who is, and who is to come, but the Lord who was, who is now come in fullness. Whatever happens after that will be true. These ones that are perfected is image and likeness. Are you catching what I'm saying? Praise the name of the Lord. You see that uh, in, I think, around verse 5 of Le Revelation 16. But there is a journey from where we are to what that glorious estate is. But it's a sure journey. Because God does not start a thing and abandon it midstream. It's a short journey. 
And there is a there is a batch of persons that have come into the realm of the man child. Now, of course, you may have had the understanding that man child that the fullness realm. No, the man child is not the fullness realm. But it's a realm which if you get to caught up to God you have certain things available to you and then caught up to the throne eventually. Anyhow we are looking at Luke 12 32. Fear not little flock. Who are the little flock? A band of people God has apprehended for himself whom the Lord is pleased with because he's been able to walk into them. That character of life that is well pleasing to him. It is the Father's good pleasure. And the water baptism it was one person. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But there is a band of people and the Bible says it is the Father's good pleasure to give them the kingdom. Let us say amen. amen. And one thing can be said here um, so that um, we'll keep these things in perspective. And every time I want to run away from this uh, Revelation 15, 16 situation so that I can concentrate on the, that which the Lord wants uh, us to receive, I, I still find an unfinished transaction uh, that needs to be looked at. Now, come with me to verse 7 of Revelation 15. And then I will make a mention of one or two things. And one of the four living creatures gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. This is strategic partnership. And it, it communicates this on brief that when you come to the estate of the four living creatures, I, I, again, I do not want you to be stressed. The four living creatures are not um, some wonderful creatures you will see in heaven. They relate to the beginning of that third stage of spiritual growth, which when we come to, the Lord has his way in this band of people. So the four living creatures are not perfect. They are still growing up. And if you read Revelation 1 verse 6 in the light of their own confessions in Revelation 5, 8 to 9, you understand what I'm saying. They are not perfect. But having a pure and perfect understanding of the, of the, of the mind of God, they've been shown what is, what was and what is to come of God's plan, they are able to relate to it in the place of uh, prayers and intercession, and they are able to relate it to it in the place of ministry. Now, so what was needed for the seven ages to use, there was an understanding of it by the four living creatures. A, a very practical way of putting it is we have not gotten there to the realm of the six, seven angels spoken of in Revelation 15, 1. Nevertheless, the responsibility of pouring the fear judgment we have in our capacity as living creatures. I thought you would say amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm. This is some kindness when you say something and people are not able to get it fully. There are those just one sentence, they already understand what is happening, but again, I will stay a little bit to um, address this. It's all beautiful 
when we pray and say, Lord, I come before the uh, four uh, living creatures and the 24 elders before your throne. Good spiritual uh, attitude. But let us understand that both the 24 elders and the four living creatures represent two parts of the same and represent spiritual growth at the third level. The middle of the road position that becomes full grown when the revelation uh, uh, 51 set in. So let's go back to Revelation 1. I've made reference to these verses of scriptures, but um, we'll read it out so that we can have uh, be on the same page and then we will leave this. The, the greetings come from verse 4 of Revelation 1 and we'll read through to verse 6. Take notice of verse 6. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before the throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten from the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and had made us what? And what? How? Kings and priests unto God. Not kings and priests of God. Unto God implies a period of training which continues until we come to fullness of what is described in Revelation 15, 1. And our belt is now over the breast. Amen? Amen. It's priest unto God. When you read Revelation 24, it is the priest of God. There's a difference between unto and of. And in the case, uh, papers is still under spiritual growth. Amen. All right. I've finished reading verse 6. I had made what? And had made who? And had made who? Does the us include you? Does it include me? Yes. All born again believers are destined by the nature of their calling to be trained to come to be trained in priesthood and come to full priesthood in the power of our king. Amen? It's a training in priesthood. The character of our training is a training in priesthood. And you see it again in verse 16 of Hebrews 2. God did not choose angels that seem to be, uh, that is above us. He chose the seed of Abraham to engage them in service, train them and leave them to reign. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. We are divine spirits. We, we are in the heavenlies. I thought you would shout amen. All right, then quickly come to chapter 5. And then that will be sufficient to show that the living creatures already by the training they have received have insight into God's plans and purposes and are able to commit themselves to the call of worship, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving, such as are needed to crystallize God's purposes. Are you in chapter 5? Are you in chapter 5 already? All right, come with me to verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and four and twenty elders 
fell down before the Lamb, having every word of them harps and golden vials full of their odors, which are the prayers of saints. Okay, let's read verse 9 together. One to go, and they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of what every kindred and tongues and people and nations. So it's clear these are redeemed from among men to be a kind of first fruit to God. They had their beginning in the human race. They have their beginnings as humans. Now let's read verse 9, the verse of choice. Want to go and had made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. When you get to that the, 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 the middle of the road position is not a far-fetched point. If a believer is well instructed to the Lord and he commits himself to the Lord, in two, three years after salvation, he can come to the entry point of this estate. And God will do a quick and a short work and cut it short in righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sufficient for our present purpose is to indicate that the little flock is available to God. That's all he has now. And he commits himself completely to them. He is sure they will be what he wants them to be. And he walks them through the growth stages until he perfects them in his image and likeness. Let us say amen. And he says to this band of people, fear not. There are, there are so many distractions in the world today that some, some persons may, may lose team. This war cannot be... And now you see, sorry uh, if I'm too particular about something, but I will say it. Sometimes in our meeting, we, 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 we see people pray, and there's nothing wrong with it, absolutely nothing wrong with it. But you hear me what I'm going to say about it. He says, My son, pray for a child being dedicated, you will be a father, a grandfather, and great grandfather, and great great grandfather. When you, when you count the number of generations that uh, uh, you have uh, uh, called out over that child, huh? then you, you are saying that, that that child will still be on earth reproducing biologically for 160 years. I beg your pardon. The kingdom shall be perfected in this age. Hello? In this age. <laughs> 